Hello! So today I'm going to be talking about The Most Secret Memory of Men by Mohamed Saar. Now this novel has been out for quite some time but it's only just been released in the UK. Last year I had a couple of people comment or mention this novel to me, people whose opinions I trust and value, therefore I was excited to give this one a go. I also feel like this novel's very late release date in the UK might be down to the International Booker Prize. Maybe they're trying to line it up to improve its chances, so we may see this one on the list. I just want to give you a little pre-warning that I am going to butcher and mispronounce some of the names within this novel. I did give them a little Google, hoping to find maybe somewhere I could learn how to pronounce them, but alas, no luck, so I can only apologise in advance. It's a sort of coming-of-age novel entwined with a gripping investigation. We follow the journey of Degan Fay, a young Senegalese writer living in Paris. Fay discovers a novel written in 1938 entitled The Labyrinth of Inhumanity. The novel was written by a mysterious and vanished writer named T.C. Elliman. Elliman vanished into obscurity after his novel was accused of plagiarism. Fay's curiosity and almost obsession with this novel, The Labyrinth of Inhumanity, just swells and gets bigger and bigger and bigger until he sets out to find out the fate of T.C. Elliman. His journey spans continents, following Elliman's footsteps from Senegal to Argentina to France. We get deep dive into Elliman's origins. We learn about his parents, and in fact, the fates of his parents and his parents' lives are just as intriguing as his own. The novel is exploring themes of exile, artistic creation, colonialism, and neocolonialism. In Paris, Faye immerses himself in a group of writers, artists, and intellectuals who aid and help him on his journey. But the central question at the heart of this novel, the question that gives it all of its intrigue, is whether Faye will ever eventually discover the fate of Elliman and the reason for Elliman's disappearance. As this novel spans many, many decades, we are also confronted with global tragedies. The Holocaust, dictatorships, genocide, collaboration and resistance are all explored. Ultimately, this novel is a homage to literature's power to transcend time and space. It's a novel about novels, a novel about writers and the power of the written word. So there you go, that was the blurb. That's kind of what this book is about. Although I know I haven't given you too many details because as always with a book that's also a little bit of a mystery, the more I give you, the shitter your experience is going to be. Whilst reading this novel, I couldn't escape thinking about The Shadow of the Wind, a novel I absolutely adore. Both these books follow an investigation by a central protagonist into the origins of the novel's creation, but also the origins of the writers themselves. Both of these novels have many twists and turns as the protagonists dig deeper into the mystery surrounding the writers. It just gets more and more intriguing. However, a direct comparison to The Shadow of the Wind is not necessarily fair. These two books are doing vastly different things. I would say that The Shadow of the Wind is much more about its characters, its story, and the mystery of the story. It is a much more commercial in that sense. Although I found the writing to be beautiful in this, yeah, The Shadow of the Wind, I think, would appeal to a much larger audience, whereas The Most Secret Memory of Men is definitely saying something. It has definitely got a political heartbeat within it. That's not to say this book is inaccessible in the way it is written, not at all, but it is asking and requiring the reader to think a little bit deeper, to ruminate a little bit more than something like Shadow of the Wind. However, however, I cannot deny the similarities between the two books. And I can also suggest that if you liked The Shadow of the Wind, there is a lot within this novel you are going to enjoy. So what did I like and what didn't I like? What I liked. I really love the novel's exploration of African literary tradition, how it challenges conventional narratives and expectations. Sar is able to navigate themes of cultural identity and artistic integrity with excellent clarity. I also really liked how the novel defies categorization, offering a really thought-provoking reflection on the intersection and blend of identity and literature. It's just really captivating and engrossing, and for the most part, I really enjoyed this sort of blending of genres. It's incorporating elements of mystery, of ghost story, of magical realism, and all of these things are just adding depth to the novel's story and overall its philosophical exploration. I really loved how the novel kept shifting gears structurally. We get diary entries, journal entries, newspaper articles, and all of these things just kept the mystery and the novel and the build really dynamic. Saar does a really good job narratively of weaving together these disparate threads of plot and character. I really loved how the novel is forcing the reader to think about the significance of artistic pursuit and the kind of search for meaning within art and life. 
And finally, the last thing I liked is the novel is sort of woven with this kind of irony over the sort of challenges that African writers have faced within the literary world. It is kind of subtle and woven into the background, except for maybe a couple of moments where it's sort of shoving it in your face. But it's it's always kind of there. And it kind of gave this book a sort of heartbeat, a sort of meaning over everyone's journey, all of the characters' journeys throughout this novel. Yeah, that kind of little element, that little add-on just woven in, just really gave this book an extra level. Side note, before I get onto my dislikes, I completely forgot to say that this novel is actually based on a real-life African writer who was accused of plagiarism and disappeared. I haven't done any research into the origins of that story and how closely it interweaves or connects with this novel, but yeah, I was doing a little bit of reading and I did find out that yeah, this is based on a kind of true story. What didn't I like? My first and probably main dislike is the dialogue within this novel. Now it could be down to the translation, but I just kept thinking to myself, people don't really sound like this. Now I have been surrounded by theatre makers, artists, poets, playwrights for a majority of my adult life. And as much as we can at times sound like absolute wankers, we never really sounded like the characters in this novel. Even when waxing philosophical, I don't know, there was just something in the way the characters were talking and the way they interacted that just didn't feel real to me, uh, especially within that first 100 pages. It's something about the language of it that just felt off, it just didn't quite connect. Another thing I kind of disliked is this novel likes to go off on massive tangents, and that's absolutely fine because most of these work, most of these add towards the sort of consciousness of our protagonist and the story being told. Most of this give us access into his thought process and allow us that kind of, that connection to his inner turmoil and his absolute quest for the truth. However, some of them, and again, it all sort of happens within the sort of first 100 pages or whatever, some of these little side tangents, these little thought threads that Faye goes on, just felt a little bit unnecessary. They felt like they could have been reined in a little bit. Uh, the biggest shame about this novel is that I actually think it might put a lot of people off within its first 100 pages, uh, because yeah, there's just something about it that didn't quite gel. I was really, really enjoying it, and I was having a really good time, but there was a part of me going, but there's something in the writing here that isn't quite working for me. It could be completely a me thing, but yeah, I thought I'd just warn you about that, but stick with it because it does get a lot better. There isn't anything necessarily experimental or challenging within the prose of this novel. There's just something about it that it started with that, that yeah, that I didn't quite gel with. It felt sort of indulgent, but not in a good way. And as I already mentioned, this could just be a translation thing, because when the novel sort of steps away from Faye's control over the narrative, this does start to disappear, and I was able to sort of sink into the novel a lot easier. And my final dislike, and this is a very, very small one, and I can't stress that enough, but because this novel is playing around with genre, playing around with form, for the most part, most of these really work. However, sometimes I found myself going, I just want you to pick a lane here. Some of the kind of like transitions or the way it shifts sort of brought me out of it a little bit. And yeah, I just wanted the novel to sort of pick and stay in a lane just a little bit more. I'm gonna say that the different ways and approaches this novel takes, it's sort of playing around with genre, how the mystery keeps unfolding. And as the mystery unfolds, things get a little bit stranger and the novel starts approaching sort of magical realism aspects and it all gets a little bit yeah, just a little bit more interesting. Those are the things that kept me hooked. Those are the things that made this book dynamic and very intriguing and kept me turning the page. But at times, at times, I did go to myself, I don't know if these are all blending or gelling quite right. So yeah, it was only small, it was very small, but it was another thing that kind of just took me out of the book a little bit. But that's it for my dislikes. Overall, I thought this book was excellent. I really, really enjoyed it. It is thought provoking, it is philosophical, it is interesting, it is dynamic, it is engaging, it is educational, especially from the aspects of the kind of African writers, the history of African writers, and also the history of African writers in France. It just, it covers a lot. It is heavy in themes, it is heavy in plot, it is rich in its exploration, and overall, yeah, I just had a really, really good time with this one. I'm sort of knocking half a star off for all of my dislikes, uh, but overall, all of my dislikes, 
they're quite small things and eventually I was able to sort of push past them. So I'm going to go uh, 4.5 stars out of 5 for this one. I thought it was excellent and definitely worth a read and I would be really happy to see it on the International Book Along list. So have you read The Most Secret Memory of Men? And if so, what did you think about it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Please let me know in the comments below. I want to thank you so much for watching. I hope you're well and you're enjoying whatever you might be reading. And I'll see you all on the next one. Bye.